Hey everybody and welcome again to the LIU Brooklyn Coaches Show presented by Applebee's. We're here on 395 Flatbush Extension right across the street from LIU Brooklyn's campus at Applebee's. We're here with head coach Gail Striegler. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Going into the season, lost five seniors to graduation. You have a relatively young team. Talk about how difficult it is to teach a team how to win. I know everybody wants to win. But how difficult is it to teach a team how to win? Well, I think that the kids that we have back had been used to winning, but they hadn't been put in situations to where they were the go-to people to have to put on the line to be able to win. And, you know, those are totally different situations, being on a winning team and being the ones that are out there in the crucial situations when you have to have it all on the line. And the kids are just starting to now get that. I think it's a different sense of urgency, a different sense of we've got to have this done at this time and this play has to be executed. And you five are in, you've got to get a defensive stop at this time and the kids are just now starting to get that a little bit more and I think they've done a good job in the last couple of games of starting to understand that. Two and eight in the NEC so far but four of those losses have come seven points or less so you're not too far away from being 500 or even a little bit better. Uh, talk about what you talk to the team about after those tough losses. That's, that's a tough thing. I think the kids feel bad enough because you don't want to get on them too much. But in the same vein, they have to understand that losing is not okay, that it's important to go out there and be able to execute and be able to get defensive stops when we need them. And to play for 40 minutes, I think that that's the toughest thing that we've really had to do besides really changing some of their mindsets on their roles from the year before is really getting them to play for 40 minutes. Do we look really good in five-minute stints? Then we look really good in 10-minute stints. I thought the game last night we finally played hard for the whole 40. We still made mistakes, which is fine because you're not going to play a mistake-free game, but they played hard, I thought, for 40 minutes. And those games that we had, the seven, six, five-point losses, you know, we played in spurts. We played good for 20 minutes, we played good for 25 minutes, but we hadn't put a whole game together. Now, in that game, on Monday night against St. Francis University, a 61-43 victory for the Blackbirds. Latava Whippy had a big game, 14 points, 15 rebounds from a guard position. Talk about her development over the course of the last year plus. She's continuing to get confidence and get better. You know, she's, she used to only be able to do a, a couple of things really, really well. Now she can drive right, she can drive left, she's got a little bit of a pull up. And the more she continues to develop, the harder she's going to be able to guard. And defensively, she just puts it all out there every single night. She She's just incredible with the intensity that she brings. Now again, last night she was like a vacuum cleaner with the, with the rebounds. Every one that went up, she went and got, which we really had to have, especially since Cleandra Roberts has been out for the last two games. Also, what stood out to me in that performance was 17 assists on 23 made field goals, which is an incredible rate. Talk about your point guard, Kelly Robinson, who had eight assists, and also, was that a, an emphasis going in to share the basketball? I don't know if it was necessarily an emphasis. We always have an emphasis on trying to get the ball inside of the post players and making the extra pass. It just really went well last night. We made them extra pass. They knocked the shots down. I think we've done a pretty good job of distributing the ball throughout the, the whole four or five last games, but the shots haven't always fallen. This last game, we hit some big time shots at crucial times. Sophie Boston and Honor Duvall also had 12 points in the win for the Blackbirds. Now changing gears just a little bit, talk a little bit about the recruiting class for next year. You have four new players coming in that you signed in the early signing period. Let's talk a little bit about Shinovia Dove, a 5A guard from Palm Beach, Florida. Great athlete, going to really be able to work in well with our presses um, in the upcoming season. And she's going to take a lot of what Crystal's role was, not the shooting position, but our defensive stopper. She can really pressure the ball, get up on the ball. I think she probably guards as well as anybody we have on our team right now. So she's going to add a lot to the defensive end. Offensively, she can get to the rack really well and finish. Average 22.2 points per game as a junior. Uh, now let's talk about Mercedes Harris, the 6-1 forward out of Rhode Island. She's going to be hard for people to guard. She's, she's not uh, this, anything like Ashley Palmer as far as her game goes, but she'll be difficult to guard because she can hit the outside shot a little bit. She can hit the three. She can hit the high post shot, and she can go post you up on the block. So we've got two kids coming in that can do that same thing, so we're really excited about having the versatility for those two players. Second team All-State selection in Rhode Island last year. Third signee, Brianna Ferris, a 5'9 guard out of Tennessee. She's going to play a little bit of backup point guard and shoot the ball for us. She's uh, going to be fill the other position, which is Crystal Wells' other part, which is a three-point shooting. She's a good outside shooter, going to be able to hit the three for us a little bit, and, and does a good job of distributing the basketball also. She's been a part of winning teams in the past two years, back-to-back -back state titles in Tennessee. And the final recruit 
510 forward out of California, Rachel McCoy. Again, she's the one that I think is going to be hard to guard along with Mercedes because she can play the inside and play the outside. She's playing the four for her high school team, but I've seen her bring the ball up the court. I've seen her shoot the three. Very, very athletic and, and is having a great senior year out there. And we're really excited about having all four of them on the court next year. 32 triple doubles for Rachel in her career in high school. Also a two-time high jump champion in the state of California. So does not lack in athleticism, that's for sure. Thanks for joining us, Coach, and uh, good luck on Saturday as you take on St. Francis Brooklyn uh, in Brooklyn Heights. Thank you. And we'll be back shortly with head coach Jack Perry on the men's side. You're watching LIU Brooklyn Coaches Show presented by Applebee's. Fans, head across the street to Applebee's for good food and good fun. That's Applebee's, the official restaurant of Long Island Blackbirds Athletics. Call 718 834-0800 for delivery to LIU. Welcome back to the LIU Brooklyn Coaches Show. We're here at Applebee's across the street from LIU Brooklyn's campus and we're joined here by LIU men's basketball coach Jack Perry. Jack, welcome. Good to see you, Dan. Beginning of the NEC season didn't start off as you had planned, but six game winning streak kind of got things back on track. Talk about what might have changed during that six game winning streak that wasn't going on during the three game losing streak? Well, when we lost those three games, again, we, we were missing a few starters. Um, and then that, the Wagner game, we, brought, we got those guys back. And I th thought it took a, an, an extra game to adjust. So uh, the first three games, uh, our guys weren't playing defense the way they were supposed to be playing. We weren't playing uh, with an, enough intensity. We weren't contesting shots well enough. Um, and teams were shooting a high percentage. So we talked about that, we worked on it in practice, um, and our guys have really taken to that. And, and then you talk about the rebounding, um, and we've been out-rebounding our opponents by, by 10 in, in the last seven games. Um, so they've really taken both of those things, and, and we've kind of run with it. Um, teams are shooting at a much lower percentage, they're about 43%. And uh, offense has never been an issue with this team. Uh, when you have guys like Jason Brickman, C.J. Garner, and Jamal Osawer, um, we have the talent on offense. It was just a matter of putting that um, stuff together on the defensive end, and we've done a good job of that. During that stretch, C.J. Garner was tremendous. 17 points a game during that six-game winning streak, nearly 62% from three-point range. I know you think he's one of the most underrated guards in the conference. Talk about what he's meant to the team the last two-plus years. Well, you know, C.J. again, he you know he, he comes uh, he comes in at a, from South Alabama, and you know that year sitting out, we were trying to figure him out a little bit, and he was an ambidextrous kid that would shoot right-handed and left-handed jump shots. So it was a really unique thing, and, and, and uh, we said, okay, no, we're going to make you one way and really get you as good as we can. And, and we said, okay, let's make you a righty. And he's slowly but surely gotten his level up um, as far as a shooter, and now you're seeing a 50% shooter. Um, even in, since, since Julian got injured, you've seen a different CJ, and, and, and that's because, you know, I sat down and talked to him like, hey, we need you to be more aggressive. You can't be the peripheral guy on the side. I need you to be one of our leading scorers. You gotta shoot more, you gotta attack more, and just be more of a, more of a leader as well. Because Julian obviously did a lot of that, him and Jamal. CJ has really taken that task to, to hand, and he's done a great job. I've been so impressed with his leadership and practice. Um, in the games, he's taken on that role, and, and he's been tremendous, and I hope, hopefully he can continue it. He's also one of your top defensive guys, stopping the other team's top guard most of the nights that you guys are on the floor. Always, always. He, you know, and, that, and that's been uh, you know, his, his thing for the last two years. You know, he's such an athletic kid, and he can really get into to, to shooters, especially that you know, he's chasing them around. Um, so when you're, you're playing 35 minutes a game, and I'm asking you to do both things, that's pretty impressive. Now, E.J. Reed also has been impressive during those a 10-game stretch, really. Uh, three straight NEC Rookie of the Weeks, unprecedented in LIU history, first guy ever to do that. With all the great players that have come in through the program, you know, he's been great. Yeah, no, he's, he's, a, he's a tremendous kid who works really, really hard. He's got such a high motor, and, and in practice, you know, he's, he's all over the place. Now, that's two, twofold. You know, he's, he's gotten into some foul trouble, and that's kind of been the only thing that's really stopped him from being more consistent. Um, and if he can control that, that, that's like most forwards, to be honest with you, once they get to the college level as freshmen. But if he can get that under control, he can be a tremendous, tremendous player in this league. Now, this past Saturday, rematch of the last two NEC tournament finals against Robert Morris. Tough 60-57 to 57 loss. 
What positives can you take away from that loss? Well, again, I think I think we defended we defended well. Uh, you know, we, we held them to a pretty low percentage. I think they were under 40 percent in the game. Um, I think our guys kept their composure well. Um, they had taken a, a lead of about eight in the second half, and again, we we changed things up a little bit. We got some stops, um, and we gave ourselves a chance to win. Uh, we didn't shoot free throws real well, and, and we, we, we didn't shoot from the perimeter real well, and I think that's really um, what ended up being our Achilles heel in that game. You know, we were three for 17 from three, and, and they, they made 10 threes. So, again, I think uh, we showed ourselves that, you know, even without Julian, we're, we're a team to re be reckoned with. Um, we have the talent, we have the ability to probably play with anybody in this league. Jason Brickman tied the LIU school record in assists with 610 for his career. He also had a 25-game streak of five assists or more snapped during that game, but he did have 19 points. Talk about his versatility, scoring 19 points, but not necessarily being the distributor that he has been. Yeah, well, you know what? He did have 19 points. We've been talking about him being more aggressive offensively, and, and that's what Robert Morris made him do. You know, again, they, they said, you know, we're not going to leave the shooters. We're not going to leave the guy in the post. So, we, so he had to attack the rim, and he scored well, and then they went zone. And in that zone, he didn't have the assist because guys didn't make shots. And then for him, he ended up making a few threes himself, where, which got him to 19 points. He's a really talented kid. I think he's probably one of the toughest guards in the, in, in the, in the conference um, in the Northeast. And, and you know, uh, that's, that's going to be it. You know, as far as he, he, either you're going to play him one way or the other, and he's going to, you know, you, you know, you pick your poison with it. Brickman second in the nation currently in assists with 8.2 per game. C.J. Garner also scored his 1,000th point in that game against the Colonials. Changing gears a little bit, we talked a little bit earlier with Coach Strigler about her four early signees in the NLI period. You had two. Let's uh, touch base on uh, Chris Carter, the 6'7 forward out of, out of North Carolina. Yeah, Chris Carter, he's a junior college kid out of North Carolina, and we're really excited about Chris. He's, he's a really versatile front court guy. Um, he can play multiple positions. Uh, he's long, he's thin, he runs like a deer. Um, he's got a really unique ability to really handle the ball. And with us losing Jamal Osawer, we think that he can fill that void um, with that versatility as, a, as kind of a mismatch in this league. Um, he, I think he has the ability to be a good offensive rebounder as well and, and can really be a, a, a nightmare matchup for some, from some schools in this league. Carter currently playing at Wake Tech Community College in North Carolina and your other signee, Nura Zana, a 6'7 forward from Florida. Yeah, Nura, Nura is a, you know, he's a Nigerian kid who, who goes to Coral uh, Christian Springs um, down, in, uh, down in Florida and he's a big strong kid who has uh, unique ability around the basket and he's quick with his feet. He's ve he reminds me of, of a Hakeem Olajuwon, you know, just because he's got some, such quick uh, moves in the post. Um, he finishes real well. He's a great offensive rebounder. And again, you lose guys like Kenny Onyechi and Jamal Lasawere. We're going to need some front court help next year, and, and I think he's a kid that can really help us. Nura, McDonald's All-American nominee, also set the school record with 40 points in a game recently. Uh, so Blackbird's looking forward to both of those additions next year. But first things first, this year, uh, next game against Central Connecticut on Thursday up in New Britain. Talk about what we can expect to see out of the Blue Devils. Yeah, the Central Connecticut's on a three-game winning streak. They're a really good basketball team. You know, they, they don't, they're not a real deep team, but their guards are tremendous. you got a kid by the name of Kyle Vanalis who's, who's averaging 20-plus points per game. He's a tough guard. Um, he's got the green light, and he's really aggressive on the offensive end. Um, they set a lot of ball screens for him and some other guys on the, in their program, and, and they're, uh, they're a very efficient offensive team. Um, it's going to be a major, major challenge. Um, you know, they, they, they'll switch things up, they'll play some man-to-man, -man, they play some zone on that end of the court, and uh, it should be a, it's going to be a difficult, it's going to be a very difficult game, but uh, our guys are hopefully going to be up to the task. Not to look ahead too far, but after that Central Connecticut game, you have a Barclays Center game coming up against St. Francis, Brooklyn. Talk about the energy that it gives your program to play at Barclays Center. Uh, we, you know, this will be our fourth and final game for the year at Barclays, and, and that, it's been an exciting uh, three games for us. You know, you play against the Seton Hall. You, we opened up our, you know, our our, uh, our first game against Moorhead State. Um, we finally got a win against against uh, Mount St. Mary's there, and so yeah, it's it's a it's a great it's a great place to play. Our guys really enjoy it, um, and hopefully we can come out with another win. Thanks for joining us, Coach. And uh, fans, if you're interested in going to the game at Barclays Center, tickets are available on BarclaysCenter.com.
Thanks for joining us here on the LIE Brooklyn Coaches Show presented by Applebee's. We'll be back next week and take care.